come together today to hear the word of the Lord and to be renewed by the celebration of his sacrament. The message of today's gospel is that we cannot live our Christianity in isolation from others. Since love of God is defined in terms of love for one another, as we begin this celebration of God's love for us, when we in turn share that love with those most in need of his mercy. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves now to celebrate these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you give us the great commandment of love, Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ Jesus, you deliver us from the power of evil. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Lord Jesus, you are the eternal sign of the love of the Father. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. You shall not molest or oppress an alien. For you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt, you shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among any people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of, of us and our Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia, for, wh for whom for the wo word of God has sounded forth not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything, for they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and the true God, and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, 
Jesus, who delivered us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the blessing, Father, may the Lord be in your heart and on your lips, if you may further than you proclaim this holy gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends in Christ, some time ago, Elsa Cook tells a story in the Christian century. She writes the following. Elsa was eight years old when her mother died suddenly. She expressed her grief by writing angry and very hateful letters to family members. There was neither grace nor mercy in her wards. The little girl didn't want another person telling her about her mother or another elder trying to correct her feelings with some useless words about how her mom might have felt or what she might have said if she were alive. Actually, Elsa wanted someone to blame for her mother's being dead. She wanted someone brave enough to sit with her and all of, her, of the poison in her young heart. It seemed as if her grandmother received many of the letters that Elsa wrote under her bedroom door that summer. And quietly and patiently, she absorbed her granddaughter's anger But one day, Elsa found Graham standing in the kitchen with her most recent letter clinched tightly in her hand. Staring out the window, just over the sink, without a nod to her granddaughter's presence in the doorway behind her, Graham said through gritted teeth, This hurt me. 
these words you have written have really hurt my feelings. Graham then turned to face Elza. She said, And so, I want you to know, Elza, is this the kind of person you want to be? Do you want to be the kind of person who uses your words to hate, to hurt the people that you love? The little girl answered no. And her no was the beginning of a new life for her. Now, as an adult, Elsa thinks of that no and of Graham every time she picks up her pen. Today's Gospel, my friends, poses a similar question to you and I. As Graham challenges her grieving granddaughter, so Jesus asks you and I if we will be the means of love that heals, or will we let our own self-centeredness destroy the dreams and the dignity of others? Will you and I seek to imitate the healing of Jesus, or will we break others for our, our benefit? Do we see God in the faces of others, or do we simply view them as a mean to our own ends? Maybe we need to do some thinking today. Maybe we need to do some praying through the week that we may seek to follow the great commandment of the gospel, to use all that we have and all that we are to reveal the complete and life-giving love of God in our midst. May God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in faith, let us entrust our needs and prayers to God, our Heavenly Father. That Pope Francis and all clergy may be strengthened and enlightened by the prayers of the Church throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. that all leaders of the world may be guided by the Almighty in the just use of power. Let us pray to the Lord. For scientists, health professionals, public officials, and all who serve the common good and are working to stop the spread of the coronavirus, that they may fill with knowledge and understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. That Christ may have a place in the hearts and homes of those watching this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. that we may be the face of Jesus to others, bring hope and mercy to the hungry, the homeless, and all those in need as we share our blessings with our gift to this year's diocesan annual appeal. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they feast at the heavenly banquet of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. And now for those intentions that are silent in your hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Almighty and Heavenly Father, we place our prayers and our needs before you today with great confidence. We know that you will hear and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Who's 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine that we offer to you. Through the vine, work of human hands, and come for us, our spiritual dreams. With humble spirits, with contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and are sacrificing your sight today, be pleasing to you. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord may accept, the Lord accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands for the, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, to may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 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 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Since we are unable to receive Christ sacramentally in the Holy Eucharist, let us now pray that he may come spiritually into our hearts and souls at this time. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite me wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. body and blood of Christ. Amen.
God forgives us all our sin, healing those who live in pain, saving us from final death. God fills us with goodness and love. Loving and forgiving are you, O oh Lord. So to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. Good and gracious is the Lord. So to anger, rich in love, God remembers not our sin. Forgiving and loving is God. Loving and forgiving are you, O oh Lord. So to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. There's two brief announcements prior to the final blessing. First of all, just a reminder that November 1st, All Saints Day, November 2nd, All Souls Day uh, will be coming up shortly. Next Sunday actually is the Feast of All Saints. It's a holy day of obligation, as you know, although it will be celebrated on Sunday. However, because of the, uh, the, uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, the obligation to attend Mass has been lifted. Uh, we encourage you, if you can, come to church to join us by way of our website for the celebration of All Saints Day. We will also provide Mass for All Souls Day on our website also uh, for those who cannot come to join us here in church. Also, I would like to take this opportunity to express our gratitude to those who worked and who supported our recent food sale here at our parish. We thank you for your help, your support, and your generosity, particularly at this time. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. God's blessing sends us forth.